so much content in, in chapter 5 that we've got to break it up. Uh, your unity with light. Remember, the theme of Ephesians is unity. And this part appears to be unity with light. The light or something of that nature. So, Paul continues on in this chapter with really practical stuff. Now, he starts off with the rule of love. Remember that rule from Galatians 5? Some of you weren't here in this description of love, but you can refer back to the rule of love back in Galatians 5. And back in Galatians 5, we were told to walk by the Spirit. And now we are being told to walk as Christ walked. Hmm. Is there a problem here? No. Same thing. Same God. Hmm. And in this chapter, we are presented with many of those same categories as in Galatians 5. Remember all those categories we outlined? Probably not. Does anybody remember what debauchery was? Probably not. <clears throat> and we are told not to walk in those categories, not even to be partners with those categories. I remember, drunkenness was one of those categories too. However, if you're married to a drunk, you're stuck with them, like it or not. So we are not to walk in them so that you will not stink in your offering to God, rather offering sweet spices rather than fermented sugars to God. But now, Paul adds a new category here. He's adding a category about people with empty... Mac? Words. Yeah, you got that one already, didn't you? What he's talking about is those silly sophists back there. He's talking about people with empty words. Empty words like, be who you are, or be true to yourself, or believe in yourself, and you deserve better. All that empty stuff. Foolish stuff. And it seems that Paul thinks those empty words are even worse than obscenity, even worse than foolish talk, even worse than coarse joking. It seems that those latter words are merely out of place. However, those empty words merit a different place, a place quite unlike Disney World, for there is no light in those Disney words whatsoever. And then Paul gets controversial. <gasps> Paul? He tells us to expose those Disney worlds and Disney words. Expose them for the darkness that they are. He says, expose those humanist words that often came from the mouth of the very popular Erasmus in the 16th century. He was very, very popular. He was a bestseller. And those were words that were exposed by Martin Luther, his contemporary. He exposed them for the emptiness that they were. And Luther went as far as calling Erasmus an atheist, a hypocrite, and a snake, <laughs> lacking any religious faith. And those are just kind things that he said about Erasmus. Now, unfortunately, regarding that last verse about exposing things, Erasmus wasn't really big on exposing things. He wasn't really big on active words. He'd rather turn it into a passive word. Sort of, let it be exposed, rather than expose it. And John Calvin took big issue with that. He did not like that translation at all. See, what happened is Erasmus was the very first to translate the Greek of the New Testament into Latin. You see that, a picture of that translation here. 
He was the very first to translate the Greek into Latin. You'll see in this picture, you'll see the Greek on the left side and the Latin on the right. Very much like this, where you see Greek on the left and English on the right. It's called a diglot. So this is what Erasmus did. He translated it, and it was a, it was a godsend for the people. Oh, he, traded it, he translated it into our Latin language. And this was the language that John Calvin used too, despite John Calvin being a Frenchman. He loved the French language. And soon after, actually, Martin, uh, soon after uh, uh, Martin Luther translated the Greek into German. However, John Calvin took great issue with that translation. And he said that basically Erasmus' translation was incompetent. And he even went as far as calling Erasmus an ungodly dog. Not nice at all, however. And John Calvin insisted, rather, that we should actively expose those evil works, that unbelievers must be reproved, that being brought forth to the light, they might begin to acknowledge their wickedness. And we see that the Bible confirms that we should actively expose those wicked evil works in verse 14. Yet, yet, there is an exception here. It seems if this immorality is done in secret and is not being promoted with Disney World fireworks, then it should not be exposed. It should not be mentioned by gracious Christians. Since those immoral persons already have some sense of darkness there, and it is not good for us to dwell on their darkness. Rather, we should give thanks for the light given to us. We said, see that in verse 20. We should give thanks through psalms, hymns, and songs. And not just psalms, hymns, and songs, but which uh, some denominations are, are very strict about. They will only sing the psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. We sort of leave songs like Jesus Loves Me out of the equation and Amazing Grace out of the equation. However, we are also to sing our own songs, um, silent songs of praise in your own heart. The songs of praise of your unity with the light, songs in praise of your unity with the Spirit, walking with the Spirit, walking in the light. 